Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is the brother Amawan coming back with another lesson. And as always, we start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekaha Kudash. And we give double honors to the apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well true rulers and teachers of Israel you know the uh, of the, the temple the rebuilding of the temple and uh, you know I like to say uh, blessings peace and blessings to the elect and of the uh, great multitude destined also for salvation man so I'm just going to do this lesson regarding you know, going through things, man, you know, being um, chastised by the Lord, man. Because the chastisement means something. You know, if you take uh, the example, and we're going to get into scriptures, but I just want to say this first. If you take the example of, um, you know, a, a child that's, or a son that's raised, up in a, in a way where he's never corrected, man. That's gonna you're gonna have a wayward child, man. Or right? you're gonna have a, a a a child that's out of control. You know, a child that doesn't know right from wrong. Right, so, and you know that's how we are, to the most high, man. Now these things are to remind us who the father is, man. You know. And to keep us on that straight, that so-called straight and narrow, man. You know, that, 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 that term straight and narrow, really, when, when you think about it, that's spiritual, man. Because, what well, you know, we, we, the straight gate, man. It says narrow is the way, man. So then, and, and the straightness is the difficulty. You know, so we have to be reminded once in a while, you know, that. The Lord is watching, man, you know, especially when, you know, there's times where life becomes too easy, you know, in this truth. And it's not supposed to be an easy ride, man. Uh, the Lord has a way of um, reminding you, you know, who's in charge and who's watching over you, man. You know, them demons, you know, we always talk about the demons, you know, that, that try to attack us in this truth. But the Lord has sent those demons, man. Those demons aren't working of their own accord. The Lord has sent them for, um, you know, for correction, man. And for reminders. So enough of the talking, man. Let me just read Job 1. And I'll start at 6. And it says, uh, Now there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them among them so that's telling he was among them man he wasn't they didn't turn up you know and uh stood before the most high and satan came in through the side entrance when everyone else was gone and had his little he came with along man. he was there he was there amongst among them man you know because he's what he's he is an angel of the left hand side man he's doing the bidding the left hand side work of the most high he's not equal to the most high by any stretch of imagination all right he's a servant all right and it says and when and when and so like and the lord said unto satan when whence comest thou then satan answered the lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that thou that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the Most High and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear the Most High for naught? You know, he's saying, Well, look, well, we're going to get into what he's saying. It, verse 10, it says, Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house 
and about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So uh, Satan's telling the Lord, look, look, the reason why, he's trying to say that the only reason why Job is such an upright man is because you've given him all this stuff. You know, you've given all these tangible things, man. So he's, you know, he's uh, he's happy to he's happy to be an upright man because you've made it easy for him. But Satan says, "But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face." And the Lord said unto Satan, "Behold, all that he hath is in thy power." So the Lord has told Satan, basically, "I'm putting you in charge of this now, man." It says, Own, um, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Right? So he's gone out to do his mission now, man. So let's jump to verse 2. And um, it says, so listen, again it says, Again there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And once again he says, And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the most high and the sheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou moves me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So he said, so, so Job lost a lot. He lost, you know, he lost his, um, you know, his, his riches, man. Right? But now the Lord's about to touch his, his uh, physical presence, man. So it says, uh, verse 6 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So, you know, you can afflict him physically, but not to death. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a, post, a pot shirt to scrape himself withal. And he sat down among the ashes and said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse the Most High and die. So this foolish woman, man. That's why the Lord has not sent uh, women out there to, to, to teach this word, man. As prophets, man. All right? Because they don't have what it takes to do it. They, don't, they lack the wisdom, first and foremost. Job says this, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Most High, and shall we not receive evil? In all, in all this did not Job sin with his lips. See, so you know, um, there's people out here like that, man. There's people out there that are the first thing when things start to go wrong, they want to curse the Most High, man. They want to blame the Most High instead of understanding that we're not hit, we're not in the kingdom, we're not um, we're not set up in the kingdom, man. Things that aren't supposed to be perfect. We have there's trials and tribulations that we all have to go through, right? And those trials and tribulations are to um, enhance us and to make us grow and to strengthen us, right? So we, so when we, you know, I know myself, and I know I'm pretty sure a lot of our brothers out there, man, when uh, things are going smooth and all of a sudden they start to turn a bit rough. You kind of you you remind yourself what why it's happening, man, and you get you give yourself a right smile, man, because you understand that it's the Lord doing it, man. The Lord sometimes kicks your ass, man, you know, to remind you of what that you know He's still watching you, man, and this ain't meant to be an easy road, and it's a test of faith. It's a test of your love, basically, for the Most High, man. 
you know. This is all for correction, man. Let's jump to um. So might as well stay in Job, and then I'm gonna got a few more I'm gonna get. Uh, where is it? Yeah, I'll start from seventeen. Job five and seventeen says, "Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty." So. And it's true, man. And do you know why it's true? Because the last thing you want in this truth now, now you understand how the Most High works. The last thing you want is, you know, you start, um, everything in your life is going smooth. You know, you get yourself a woman. Uh, you get, you, 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 you're getting some job that's paying you, I don't know, £70,000 a year. Um, you buying a big house and car and you, and you win a lot. All, you know, all these things of the world, man. Right? Those are clear signs that the Most High ain't dealing with you, man. If you're in this truth, you know, because we're not here to be to be um getting these earthly riches, man. You know. So. When we when we get affliction, when we get afflicted, we that's reminding us that the Lord is there, man. He's watching us and he's correcting us, man. And the correction, and you know, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going off, but the correction is there to put you to put you in your place, man. All right. You know, so you don't think too highly of yourself in this world, man. You know, you got to be reminded that you're just a servant of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Right? That's all we're here for is to serve the Lord, man. Until the until Yahweh comes back, and not and well to serve the Lord forever, I should say. I should really correct myself in that. We're here to serve the Lord, full stop. Right? That's it. And you know, and in return, the Lord has, has you know has given us promises, man. So, you know, we smile, we smile when we get um afflicted, man. You know, that you know, and these are light afflictions right now, man. We have to be able to understand that there's going to be even worse things that are going to come in the future, man. Are we going to be able to smile then? When you haven't eaten for a week, are you going to be able to smile? When you you know possibly getting chased down? By, you know, the wicked authorities, you know, Jacob, time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to be able to, to smile then, or when they, you know, they're trying to uh, enforce this whole MOTB on the on the world, man. You're going to be able to smile then, you know. So yeah, reading on. Verse eighteen says, "For he maketh sore." And bindeth up, he woundeth, and his hands make whole. He delivereth thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Yeah, man. It's about being strengthened. All right. Adversities is what builds you up in this truth, man. So don't, you know, be prepared for that. Be prepared, man. You know, I was talking about this yesterday, you know, it's like, you know, right now I get up, I go to work, I earn money, you know, I can, I can buy the things I need and whatnot. But, um, you know, how long is that going to last, man? How long is it before there is no work, there is no job, there is no money, there is no home, there is no bed to lay on, you know, there is no food to eat. We have to take this into consideration. Hebrews 12 and 7 says, If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father, chast father chasteneth not? So if he was, about, if he was able, to, and that goes for the whole of Israel, man. That's why we're under these curses, man. It's the chastening of a father to his, to his sons, to his children, man. Because they don't want to receive 
They didn't want to receive correction. Or we as a nation didn't want to receive correction, man. So, um, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, there's an old saying, the old, I don't know, other, the other um, tribes might say it, but there's an old Benjamite or Benjaminite saying or Banyamian saying, if you can't hear, you must feel, man, you know. So if you're not listening, man, you're going to have to get, you're going to have to feel. If you're not listening to the instructions to the to your correction, man, then you're gonna have to feel it. All right, and that's what this is, man. Verse eight says, "But ye, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards, and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence." Shall we not much much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Right? You know, so people go to work, you take chastisement from your boss, man. You know? You can take chastisement, forget your, with your worldly father, no disrespect. If you can take chastisement from your boss, then you must be prepared to take Chastisement from the heavenly father, the father of spirits, man, meaning what the father of us all. It's and it goes on, it says, For verily they for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, not meaning not, not mean that they're doing it for fun, but they were doing it for their own end. All right. You know, the father was of your 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 worldly father chastises you. Because yeah, obviously, you know, well, some fathers do it because they care. Some, you know, there are some abusers of their of their children out here. Either way, it's for their own um, means, their own end, right? But the Lord is doing it. Well, it goes on and says, "But He for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness." So. Yeah, so we can so we can follow in the ways, man. So we can learn of his ways, man, and be righteous. Obviously, we'll never be um one hundred percent righteous on this side of things, but this is for, for this is to for our learning, man. Right? So when we so when we go into the kingdom, we know what righteousness is because we know what wickedness is, man. Verse eleven says, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. But grievous, nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So yeah, it's the it's the long term, man. You know, you might not enjoy it now. You know, you you ever heard, you ever heard a, a father say to, to his son or his daughter, yeah, you know, you might you won't understand why I'm doing it, but one day you will understand. That's what the Lord is doing. Man. You know, scripture say endure. Uh, I can't remember how it goes now. My mind just went blank. Endure hardship. Endure hardship, I believe it says, like a good soldier. Of you have by Shemiel Shai. I'm just going to read this one real quick. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 32. It says, But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So what's that mean? It means that we will, you know, when we're chastened, it's, so we will hearken unto, you know, the ways of the Lord, you know, the word, how we're supposed to walk in the truth. So we don't get con that condemnation. So we don't get destroyed ultimately. When um, those missiles come raining down, that's what this is. This is about salvation, man. This is about making it out, you know, escaping the second, the second death, and entering into the kingdom, the correct way. Verse 
So I'm just going to finish uh, one more here. I think the point has been made, more or less. So Ecclesiasticus or Sorak 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Yeah, so that first of constantly endure, man. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou, thou art changed to a lower state. So, your mindset is not supposed to alter when the Lord is jacking you up in this truth. All right, You're not supposed to start moving differently because the Lord is um, getting on you, man. Keep it moving exactly the same way. You know, the you you your your you know the way your your thoughts and your your love for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and respect and fear should not change alter in any way because you you know now you're you know that's now you're low because that's how, that's how the Christians are man now they're all about God is great God is love and God will give me this and give me that what are you doing what are they what are you doing for the Lord man. All right. There's a reason why we go through these things and understand it because we understand it, man. We've been given through the spirit. We've been given the knowledge, man, the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding of how or of what the Lord expects of us, man. We're lucky to have anything, man. We are lucky to have anything that we, uh, I don't usually like to use the word luck, really. Or let's say fortunate. We're fortunate that the Lord has is the way he is that he pities and um he's merciful because we doesn't we, you know we could have a lot less than what we do actually do have in this in, in this world man uh verse 5 says for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity right so this is what it's about, man. Gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So, you know, it's all to build us up. It's all to build us up. Don't let your faith waver because <clears throat> the Lord is bringing you down. Man. That's Like I said, that's the Christian world, man. And that's the rest of the world as well. The rest of the world doesn't believe in what we believe in, because, uh, you know, as far as the heathens go, they have not the spirit, but as as our, of our people, they don't believe because, you know, they, they're carnally minded, man, they don't understand how the Lord works, you know, now is not the time for pleasure and easy living, right, we've been put on here to endure and to be um, under the kosh, basically, until the return of our Lord, man. Yeah, and there's going to be plenty more chastisement to come. I'm just going to put that right out there, man. It's ain't, it ain't going to get any easier. The only time it's going to be easy is in the kingdom, man. Up until that point, it's, it's just going to get more and more difficult. Yeah, so we need to bear that in mind. We need to all bear, bear that in mind, man. And I'm talking to myself, you know, as well. Anyway... Uh, yeah, that's it on that, you know. Lord, when it was edifying, enjoy chastening, man. Like a good soldier of your Hashem Yahweh Shemiel Uh, so yeah. Uh, so yeah. I want to say Shalom. All praise and glory to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Shalom to the next one.